Hey friends, today I'll be making the word loved. I'll be using quarter inch MDF. But before I start cutting, I need to put my blue painters tape on. I always use blue painters tape on everything that I cut. That way I'm not having to use toxic chemicals to get spray glue off of my project. I'm going to take a minute here and put all the tape on. I will not be speeding up this video at all or slowing it down. Okay, after I do that, I use 3M spray glue. I get it at Home Depot. It's in a reddish burgundy can and I spray the back of my pattern and affix it to my project. I'm going to show you the can in a second. Right here I make sure my tape is down very very well. That's the spray glue I was telling you about. And I'm going to go outside and spray the back of my pattern. And I'm back. So now I'm putting my pattern on my board. Now usually after I do this, I put clear patch packaging tape on my uh, project. But I'm not going to do it this time. I want you to see why I put the clear packaging tape. I've had people ask me, well, why are you all the tape? Trust me, there's a reason for all the tape. Not just um, making it an easier cleanup, but it lubricates the blade. It keeps it cool. All right, what I did was I just took a board and I put it behind the project I'm about to drill so that I don't drill through to my table. And I'm going to drill all my inside holes. Um, you should always do your inside cuts before cutting outside of your project. You'll notice um, when I'm almost done drilling all my holes, I'm going to drill a hole on the outside of the word because I'd like to keep the whole board intact. It will make sure that my word is not broken because that word is very delicate. There you go, that's the outside one. You'll see what I mean because like I said, I'm not speeding this up or slowing it down. I'm gonna show you everything. The reason for me showing you everything is it's my hope that someone will watch my hand positioning or what I'm doing and it'll help in getting better at scrolling. I just wanted to make it closer so you can see there are no signs of where I started or stopped. You need to keep it very, very neat. Um, the reason for this is a lot of you do names and things like that. If you decide to do compound cuts or if you decide to do like a jewelry box, your jewelry box, the lid needs to line up with the bottom of your box. So it's very important to learn to stick to your line. I've seen people cut out the word in color. And when you do that, it's totally fine. You know, it doesn't have to align with anything. But if you have to line it up with something, you need to learn how to stay on your line. Please stick around till the end of the video. I've also put a hack in this video that a subscriber sent me and I'd like to show you the first time that I've used it 
and give you my feelings on the hack. Okay, as you're about to see, my pattern starts to flop up and down. I did not spray the spray glue on very well. I did that on purpose to explain to you why I use the packaging tape. It's important that when you're doing something that's um, intricate, this is not as intricate as you can do, but if you're doing something intricate, you don't want your pattern flopping up and down while you're still trying to cut. So. To make sure this doesn't happen go ahead and just tape the edges of your pattern now usually like I just said I usually just tape the edges and I'm going to show you that right now I take little pieces and I put them you know around the edge of my pattern but I'm going to just take long pieces and do this one so I don't have you guys waiting you see how small they are very very small again I'm only doing the edges now I'm going to go ahead and use long pieces so that we can get this party started again
Also, I've gotten messages in the past about my hands being too close to the blade. No such thing. This blade only goes up and down. It will not reach out and grab you. Um, I'm making sure I'm very careful. And sometimes it's the angle people are looking at, and sometimes it's not. But again, I'm going right close to the edge. I feel super comfortable with it. I don't advise anyone else to do it until you're comfortable with your machine and its workings. You guys, I am so in love with scroll sawing. It is my passion. I've been doing it for 20 years now. And there is nothing else I would rather do. I know in the past I've done a lot of different crafts. And I've started and stopped them at different times in my life. But this, I don't think I'll ever stop doing unless I can't see or I can't use my hands or something but it is something about it that's mesmerizing to me again drop it in the comments below and let me know how long you've been scrolling and if you feel the same way We're coming to an end in the cutting. Now, when you get ready to remove this word, make sure you do what I did just now. I made sure I held my word down and I pulled up the excess wood on the sides. You do not want to break it at this point. This is a complete word. And now I'm about to remove the tape and paper. And as you can see, it comes off really easy. Like I said, you don't want to have to use solvents 
to get glue off of your project after you've worked so hard for it. Don't forget, stay around for the end of the video. I am going to um, give a little scroll saw tip that one of my subscribers gave to me. This word is done, but don't go away. Now I would like to show you guys a hack that one of my subscribers sent to me. His name is Colin Colston. I did a video a few weeks ago that talked about um, little pieces slipping through the hole of your scroll saw. I usually take a playing card and I tape it to the table and drill a hole through it so that I will have zero clearance meaning nothing will fall through there. Well, Colin, he said I could also use a dry erase magnetic sheet. And that's what you're looking at right now. It's completely magnetic and you can write on the white side. Well, let's try it out. First things first, I need to find the center of this sheet. Once I find the center, I'm going to drill a hole and then position it onto my scroll saw table. I really, really like how this magnetic sheet holds on to my table. It's super sturdy. I'm just making sure my blade is straight in there. And now I'm going to take some throwaway wood that I have and I'm just going to cut a small circle to see if this hack works. Okay, as I remove this, I'm noticing the little piece that I cut is still in there. Yep. I'm going to turn it over and push it out. Yep. Hey there, Colin. I have your name on the back of the board. <laughs> it's still in there, you guys. But let's look at the table now. This worked. It absolutely worked. I'm gonna cut one more piece. Now, after I've cut the extra piece, I've noticed that the hole is getting bigger. So again, this hack worked, but for me, I think I'm going to stick with the playing card. One reason is this sheet is pretty expensive. When I say expensive, it costs more than a deck of cards. And I actually get my cards free from a local casino. Um, I don't want to have to keep buying these sheets or um, moving around to different spaces um, 
I definitely like this hack and thank you so much for sending to me, but I think I'm gonna stick with my card. Those of you that try this, please tag me, let me know. You can find me at Instagram, Mytoya in California, or leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, bye.